with Rosie. Um, she uh, started her career as a sports reporter with CFCF News in Montreal before becoming a weather and entertainment reporter with Global Montreal. Uh, she followed that with uh, going to the States and working with CNN and other uh, U.S. Uh, broadcasters. And uh, obviously, as you guys know, through our, our, um, our content that we've been posting, you've seen Rosie's receipts at the Olympics, <laughs> uh, three-time Olympian, um, and 400 meters hurdles record holder. Right. So no one has, no one has contested you yet. <laughs> Um, and also, you know, segueing from your journalism career, uh, veteran journalist, you know, uh, interviewing all the stars, all the entertainment stars that we can think of, and then segueing into being a film director. So you have a lot of receipts, and I'm sure I didn't read every one of them, but I wanted to give you guys just a glimpse and a sense as to, you know, how much Rosie has um, achieved so far, and I'm sure you're, you still got a lot of other projects on the go and ideas. Um, so I think what I want to ask you first, I mean, we are just coming off of the Winter Games. Yes. Um, you know, how was, were you, were you following online, uh, watching it at home, or, you know, did you have any, you know, friends yeah. over, just kind of taking it all in, and, and what was that like for you to, to take it in? So exciting. And uh, I was following it mainly online. Yes. Yeah, and uh, I was particularly following two athletes, because when you actually know the athlete personally, it makes such a huge difference. And um, Cynthia Pia, she was a former thrower in track and field, and she switched to bobsleigh. Oh, okay. And uh, she was down to the wire, wasn't sure if she was going to make the team. And at the last minute, she came through with the rest of um, the women on the Canadian bobsleigh team, and she made it. So I had a particular interest in bobsleigh, and also, there's this incredible athlete, her name is Felicia George, who also, she runs the, on, in the summer games, she runs the sprint hurdles, 100 meter hurdles, and then now she doubled and went into the winter games and decided, hey, I'm gonna try this bobsleigh thing. What a switch. Unbelievable, <laughs> made the switch, became the runner with uh, the invincible Kaylee Humphreys, and they won a bronze medal, so to watch that, and we saw, I saw her train and transition from sprinter to bobsleigh. And uh, she got stronger and bigger, and she was so focused and dedicated. And you can follow her on Instagram, and she really gives you, you get to walk in her shoes, and she gives you a great feel of what it's like to make that winter team. In fact, you can follow so many of the athletes yeah. and go through the opening ceremony. So yeah, I watch because Sport to me, like, I, I, I define myself in part by my sporting experience. And I would not be here, obviously, in this chair talking to you if I wasn't this athlete, if I didn't follow my dreams when I watch the Olympics on TV going, I don't know how they run around that whole track, but I'm going to try that. It seems so big. When you're a little kid, that, that track, you go, what is it? Is it a mile one time around? But I remember just being so inspired, and I, you know, and I did it. And it it taught me, it taught me that anything is possible. Because yes, you know, my parents did a little bit of sport here and there. They're from Nigeria, so of course they had their physical activity curriculum. They played soccer. My mother played netball. Anybody know that yeah, sport? My mom from netball, the Caribbean is always right? talking about netball. Yes. Right? Yeah. <laughs> my mother played netball. So, you know, I mean, she was active and my dad, but, you know, nobody went to the Olympics, right? And netball hasn't really, it's kind of fell, fallen off. Uh, but I just, um, I, it was kind of my way out. You know, I grew up in, you know, lower middle class uh, apartment building. And you grew you just, up in, Mont in Montreal? I grew up in Montreal. And I was always a dreamer um, and just ran, oh my gosh, okay, I'm going to date myself here. Anybody know the... Um, award of excellence that you would get if you were in high school and you would achieve in elementary school and you would achieve all these different standards and you could get like gold, silver, bronze, yeah. and the top was award of excellence. Yeah. So when I was a kid growing up, my thing was, you know, every year we'd, we'd start, it'd take like a couple of weeks, you'd get to do push-ups or sit-ups, run for a mile, sprint, pull-ups or whole hang time. And if you achieve, there's certain standards for your age, and if you go, 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 then you get the award of excellence. 
that was my thing. I was like, oh my gosh, <laughs> I'm going to get the Award of Excellence. And so that was my foray my into the world of sport, you know, and that was my goal. And I, I, you know, and I'm not, they don't do that anymore. They don't do that anymore. And that, and I know that it might be a little bit, it might be deemed a little bit too her, too competitive. And now we kind of go, everybody's a winner, but um, I think that they, they need, yeah, you know, and, you know, and it's, and it's, I know that the, 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 the foundation for that came from a place of love, you know, they didn't want to leave any kids out, yeah. but, um, but there's still room for something like the Award of Excellence, and there's still room for, for kids to get the top, top honor, and, and everybody can get a sticker as well. It's healthy competition, you yeah. know, and yeah, people can really with that. use that when they get to the working world. Absolutely. You know? Kids can handle it. Mm -hmm. I have a daughter. I'm a mom as well. And uh, I remember she was playing soccer because we I threw her in everything. Soccer, tennis, gymnastics. I did it. You're going to do it now. Right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And uh, she was playing soccer and poof, right in the face with a ball. And blood came gushing out and all the parents turned around and looked at me and I was just like, hmm. Let the coach handle it. Like, she'll yeah, be, she'll it, be, she'll be okay. okay. Like, she stood up and blood came out because that's what happens you know the point of impact and uh sorry and uh and it was amazing she was 10 years old and she just you know just dabbed her face and the assistant on. coach took <laughs> took care of it and it was okay yeah. and she was fine I think if I was like oh my gosh I think if I really made a huge deal out of it then she she doesn't even remember it I don't know she's like whatever um so I just feel that sport that's the basis of who I am. Like if you see me on TV or we're going to talk about the film that I made and my other projects coming up and it's because I said, Rosie, you went to three Olympic games. You stood at the start line in Atlanta, Georgia in front of like it was packed, like maybe 60,000 people. And then, you know, whatever millions of people watching. Yeah, you can do this. I was going you to know? say that. Yeah. Sometimes, you know, we get to um, junctures in our life where we're like, oh, you know, this thing kind of seems scary. I don't know if I yes, can do it. Yes. But all of, you know, you went back to your training. All of your training yep. Yep. from being an athlete has mm -hmm. prepared you for the things, the spaces that you're stepping into. It really has. Um, not to say that I don't get scared, not to say that I don't have doubt, because I absolutely do. When I, when I started off making this film called Oliver Jones, Mind, Hand, Hearts, hopefully coming to a TV screen near you <laughs> soon, working on it. Um, but yeah, I, yeah, yeah, can I, can I do this? I'm, I'm, I've always had a vast, deep interest in making a film and directing, but I didn't go to film school. But because of the way in which I grew up and the experiences that I had in track, falling flat on my face, running the sprint hurdle, like, I mean, like, knees tore up, you know, and burned hip, and then a couple people laughing, and you're like, ah. Oh. This was when I was in uh, university, going, oh, man. feeling embarrassed, and then just kind of walking off and going, oh, is this, should I be doing this? And you really, sport does force you to be very contemplative. There are some times when you may not perform the way you want to perform, and you may not win, the team may not uh, come through, it may be very, very difficult, but as you said, it's the very foundation for life because you'll find yourself in a position, in a career, in a job, in a situation that is not what I exactly thought it would be or I'm feeling quite disappointed or let down. Um, and sport reminds you that, yep, mm -hmm, that'll come and it'll go as well. And you'll bounce back. You really will. And you see people who are at the pinnacle of their sport who are gold medalists and they too, you, you see them. Fall. You can see them fail, and you realize it, it happens to everyone. For the athletes now that, you know, have wrapped up the winter games, like, I mean, you've been in that position before. Like, what are they going through now? I mean, it's one of those things where it's not obviously your traditional job. I mean, you're waiting for another four years where, you know, you're trying to prove yourself again, mm -hmm. not sure if, you know, physically everything's going to hold up. So what's sort of the mindset now of an athlete who's gone to the Olympics you know, it's over now, right. and, you know, what are their options? What are they sort of contemplating? There's a couple of different situations. Like the athletes that have come through against all odds and they brought home some hardware, 
it's it's going to take another two months. They'll be on a high, as they should be. They're visiting high schools and speaking schools, engagements. speaking engagements. They're flying high, and they should be, right? They work so hard and reach the pinnacle. Um, the other athletes who maybe are, who didn't uh, perform as well as they thought they should have, some of them will get that fire in the belly. They'll, they'll feel that pain of disappointment, but the true Olympians will come back again. Um, and the young ones will, of course, come back again. The older ones who are just at a certain age, yeah. depending on the sport, roughly around 30, mm -hmm. then they start to contemplate, do I, ugh, another four years? Ugh, that's kind of, that's kind of pushing it. There are so many athletes who are coming from so many different um, points of, of, you know, of experience mm -hmm. that will have different ideas in their heads. And um, the one thing that they, uh, I think that they all come back from that experience, whether it's their first or their second or more than that, they go, wow, I'm, I'm an Olympian. You know? And that's something that you have to kind of drum in your head because when you're an Olympian and you're, sur and you're surrounded by other Olympians, you don't, it's kind of the norm and you don't really understand how the rest of the world sees you. Like I used to think, yeah, I don't know, I went to, I don't know. Yeah. didn't everybody go to the Olympics? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, what? I'm not that special. Every, yeah, yeah, you know, like everybody, like I train, you know, every day, six days a week. I'm, I'm surrounded by people who are just like chiseled and, and so focused. So I used to take it, not really for granted, but um, my world was that. That was my world. And so when I came out of that world, and I started, you know, started to work in the real world. <laughs> um, people would freak out. My gosh, you went to the Olympics. I was like, yeah. I, whoa, okay, easy. It was a bit hard for me to tr transition into the real world. I have to be honest with you, because and, and yeah. that's kind of what I wanted to get into because you know. Um, so many people after maybe you said some for some people maybe age or physicality yeah. like you know um they can't go forward anymore with mm. that um so how you, i know you said it was challenging but how were you able to pivot from yeah. uh being a high performance athlete because a lot of people you know when they see athletes at the olympics they're like oh they look great and they've got flat abs but people don't <laughs> always know the work they put in to get to that point so now you're at this point where you're contemplating um you know doing something new that has nothing to do with sports. Right. So for you, um, how were you able to just pivot and say, you know what, I'm going to try uh, maybe journalism or yeah. use my voice? OK. Um, and, and how did that go for you? Yeah, that's a good question. OK, so I'll back it up a little bit and tell you guys. Um, so 1996, no, let's go back a little bit further than that. <laughs> <laughs> Take myself here. So I got pregnant in 1994. I had a baby in 1995. And I won the Canadian Championships in 1995. I came back. I had her in January, so it was cool because I had a little bit of time. And I started training. No I know, no big deal. <laughs> yeah, just have baby. Um, and then, um, <laughs> and then, and then in 1996, you know, people were like, oh, "Can you come back again and you know win nationals and make it all the way to the Olympics?" It's one thing to win the nationals, but to go yeah. to the Olympics and that stage is is a whole nother level. And that was my just, "Oh yeah, I can, and I'm going to do that." So I did that. So uh, I had a little one running around, and I went to, I made it to the Olympics, and that's where I ran my best time ever and placed six in the Olympics, and um, yeah, way back then, set the Canadian record in the foreign hurdles. And you're like, Anna had a baby, what? Anna had a baby, right here, <laughs> right here, right here. So to get to your question, to answer your question, so how was it that, you know, how could you, you know, take that and then, you know, leave track behind and then start working? Well, there was that little thing that was running around, and I said, oh, right, I'm a mom, okay. And I knew it was time. After the Olympics, and I did my very best, I knew it was time to now take the next step, the next leap of faith. So it had to be right the right time for you. Yeah, not it other really people did. telling you. Exactly, exactly. So uh, I was living in Montreal, I'm from Montreal, and if any, anyone from Montreal, no, oh, there's this. But pardon? Yeah. Ah, uh, there you go. <laughs> Do you remember this amazing sports reporter? Well, he was a, the head of CTV Sports in Montreal called Ron Rouge. He's kind of like this, like the guru of sport in Montreal. And he 
used to, you know, he would disseminate the reporters. They would always come to Canadian Nationals and interview me. And then he knew that I was hanging up my spikes and he gave me a call. He said, Rosie, yeah, you should come work here and, uh, and do sports reporting. And I said, oh, I said, I've never done it before. Um, I didn't study journalism. He said, he's old school. He, back in the day, there was no such thing as journalism school. You, you took an internship and you got coffee and you clean the floor and then, uh, and then you get this break. They go, oh my gosh, there's, there's uh, the World Series. You know, the Blue Jays just won. Yeah, we don't have a reporter. It. Go cover the story. Yeah. And then that's your big break. And then, you know, baptism by fire. Yeah. So he, <laughs> yeah. So he just believed me. He yeah. just believed in me. He said, you know what? You can do this. You're yeah. smart. There you go. And I went, I'm, I'm of that. Because um, I was a dreamer as a kid. Like, I was just, oh. You know, before we had smartphones, before we had tablets, you would just kind of stare into nowhere, right? You know, <laughs> if you guys can remember that. And nobody thought you were weird. Now you're like, what are you doing? Where's yeah. your phone? I would just kind of daydream about stuff when I was really, really, really young. And anyway, so when he asked me, I was like, wow, that's kind of cool. I started to daydream what that would be like. I said, I'm going to do this. And, I, and Montreal is a perfect place to go in, make mistakes, because it's a big little city. It is a big city. It's mm -hmm. Montreal. It's mm -hmm. world renowned, but it's you know it's fallen behind. And you know Toronto's exploded, Vancouver, yep. and yep. so on. So I went in there, and um, and like that hurdler that I was when I would fall and stumble, hit a hurdle, and get back up. I made mistakes. But Do you he, remember what your first story was? Uh, yeah, the Montreal Impact. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The the <laughs> soccer team covering the Montreal Impact. Yeah. And so it was very natural. I just had to remember. I was so like an athlete, and very like, oh my God, okay, go, go. I, I didn't give them a chance to answer the question fully, and I wanted to ask another question. Yeah. So it was like, slow it down, okay. Um, yes. Yeah, and I covered an event which was live to tape. So um, it was a, called the Big Air event at Mont Tremblant, a snowboarding event, snowboarding event. And so, that was, I had to adapt really quickly yeah. Do and, you ski? and, uh, no, I ski a little bit. But when no. you're, when you're, uh, like a high performance athlete, you're, you're just basically not really allowed, right? Yeah. I mean, if you're a skier, you can run obviously yes, to yes, get yes. in shape, yeah. but if you're a runner, yeah, you, you can't, you're not, your, mm -hmm. your coach would kill you. Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> if you, you were, you were what skiing? Oh, okay. Cause even the best skiers, as we saw, yeah. you know, during the Winter Olympics, have massive falls, right? Yeah. So, so uh, yeah. So I was always of the mindset, why not? And again, not to say I wasn't having heart attacks and butterflies. I walked in there, I was like, oh my god, what am I doing? Okay, but you know, there's just, I just, I just want to try it. And so from there, the rest sports is reporting and then yeah. entertainment and then yes. current affairs news. Yes, and yes. CNN and MS, MSNBC. MSNBC. Yeah. yeah, I got, um, again, I think it's just because being an athlete, um, at least the type of athlete I was, I was, I was, um, I was able to, I wasn't, how do I put this? I was able to speak and speak up and, and wasn't too afraid of sounding stupid. You know what I mean? Like, um, so I said hello when I walked in for the day of work and um, I asked how that worked. And um, so I think people knew I was there and yes. yeah, yeah. You kind and of like shrivel behind a wall and be right. a wallflower. You kind of just, I'm Rosie, this is who I am. And Right, yeah. right. And Do you feel like those opportunities that you got at other stations came from that? from your sort of attitude of, you know, yeah. I was an athlete, I fell down, I got back up, but I'm trying something new, but I also have a very curious curious nature. Yes, yes, definitely. Um, I managed to get to CNN and MSNBC because um, some a colleague at the station I was at, at CTV, gave me a book. He said, oh, this is, uh, my manager wrote this book, and so I have a representative, you should read the book. And then I read the book and I went, oh, well, I'll just send my tape to this rep to the guy who wrote the book, and I did. And he said, "Oh, you're pretty good. Okay, we'll represent you." It just kind of happened wow. like that. It was the right time too. Right now, it's um, it's a lot more cutthroat, and um, the U.S. isn't as open to accepting people, so it's really, really, really difficult to just kind of jump on over to the states. But I just I was able to do it, um, and. Uh, some of the experiences were not that great, actually. Really, like CNN, I was like, oh, 
Kill me now. Yeah. You know, because seriously. Sometimes people might see it on a piece you know what of paper I mean? like, or be your honest. resume yeah. and they're like, oh, you went there and yeah. you're like, I know what I, know what I oh saw behind gosh. the scenes. Yeah. yeah, honest to God, you guys. Yeah, I was like, hmm, really? This Coming is back to Canada. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Ex absolutely. Mm -hmm. You know, what, what I've been seeing now is, uh, you know, especially with female female Everyone. athletes, you know, with the explosion of social media, Every oh, yeah. athlete has a brand, yes. and now you know you can't say that I don't have a voice if you're somebody on uh, that has that platform. So, what are your thoughts on uh, you know athletes, pro athletes, using their brand yeah. to uh, speak out oh. about or you know or speak up about certain issues, social issues that impact all of us, um, but specifically for women? Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's a lot around uh, the 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 push for pay equity, for just you know having. Uh, and more of an inclusive programs and funding for women's sports and, you know, a push for more female coaches. So um, what's your thoughts on, you know, uh, athletes now using their, their, their mm -hmm. brand as a voice? Well, I would say to, as I've said to some athletes and my daughter, by the way, runs, she runs and she's, um, she's <coughs> a really, she's an up and coming sprinter on the Canadian scene. And, uh, and we talk about this, about, uh, social media and the impact it has and whether or not it's taking over your life or you can you know control it and um, I think that you I would say this buckle up because it's going to be a bumpy ride if you're going to go out there and you're going to choose a platform you got to you got to stand, stand behind it. yeah you yeah. really really do um, and I think it's fantastic actually mm -hmm. I really do like the way that in which you know, some some of these athletes these uh, female athletes are amazing like um, Alicia Newman, she's mm -hmm. a Canadian record holder in the pole vault, and she continuously breaks that record. and And uh, and she's uh, she's uh, she's a force to be reckoned with. And she's somebody, you know, she really when she uh, when you see her in, on on camera, you know, she's got power and grace, and and um, the camera just absolutely loves her. So she's got a platform. She can't do anything without the camera sort of on her. And there's it's undeniable the power that social media has and so I'd say buckle up get ready because if you are going to choose that platform whatever it is uh, there are going to be people who are going to call you on it oh yeah absolutely absolutely and so that's okay the world is not going to be going to be laid out where everything is smooth sailing you're going to have some bumps along the way and that's okay and you've got to find um, your scent your sense or your strength in other people other there are many other female athletes out there and male athletes too are taking a stand mm -hmm. and I think it's empowering. I think it's amazing. And how do you feel? Because I mean, you obviously, um, you know, you, you kind of had the Olympian career, the training and um, you've probably seen a lot of things that, you know, maybe this generation or millennials, they haven't seen. So are you on the mindset that we've come far from where we are in terms of um, having more opportunities for women in sports? Um, being on a level playing field, or do you feel like we still have a long way to go? Um, I think that we've come a long way. I think uh, just the fact that women feel uh, brave enough, feel strong enough, feel open enough to just talk about the fact that, hey, things aren't as even as they should be. I'm not feeling as comfortable as I should be. Look what happened to the U.S. gymnastics team. Look what happened. And that's because finally, you know, some parents and kids finally got the guts to open their mouths. Because I'm sure that, it would seem awful, but I'm sure the parents knew, you know, a few parents must have known what this awful, awful person was doing to their kids and thought, gee, if I speak up, then, you know, then I've got to go against the USA gymnastics and my kid all the time and the money that's put into it. He or she is going to, she's going to be ostracized. I don't know. And then finally, I mean, it took too long, but finally We're someone spoke risks. up. And, uh, you know, and finally people weren't willing to just sit back and just be quiet. They weren't being satiated by the fact that USA Gymnastics was like, don't worry, we'll take care of it. Parents and kids, and, the, and you saw these brave, brave women stand up. And um, so I think that we've come a long way because... That was happening when I was running, right? U USA Gymnastics, and now we're finding about swimming and on many other sports, sports right? Yeah. That was happening when I was running, and nobody, yeah, and it so didn't get out, yeah. right? I'm not saying nobody was speaking, but I'm sure there were a lot of people who were trying to get the word out, but nobody was listening. People are listening now. Um, it's undeniable. 
And I think it's powerful. And I think it's powerful for men and women. I really do. It's not an attack. The men have yeah. To be part of the conversation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. You know, it's it's the men are a part of this. Absolutely, a part of the success of women um, reaching higher heights. Absolutely, absolutely. It can't be done without men. You know, you went. You talked about earlier your daughter, and I know when I talked to you on the phone, I was like, you know, um, you've kind of entered so many different spaces in in life, and I'm, I'm sure she probably, uh, you know, you got you guys probably have great talks, you know, mom mm -hmm. and daughter talks. Mm -hmm. But is there any one character trait or you know one thing that you would like her to sort of continue to to have as a woman in terms of her own path um, and navigating the world that we live in now? Because as much as women are speaking out and speaking up about certain issues we're still fighting, you know, like we're still yeah. trying to get yeah, equality. Um, so is there one thing that you would sort of, you know, one skill or skill yeah. set or a, a character trait that you'd say, you know what, as a mom, this is what I, how I think you should try to navigate this world. It's okay. the one thing, whether it's resilience that right. you should have, um, because it's not going to be easy. No, no, it's true. I, all, the, all of the above, resilience, grace, mm -hmm. strength, fortitude. Um, I would also say... Um, Who's fans of rap music, old school rap, public enemy, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, you know, don't believe the hype. Yeah. Remember that song, Don't yeah. Believe the Hype? Mm -hmm. It's so true. Like, so, because when I was pregnant with my daughter, people were like, Ugh, good luck. You. There's no way you can come back. The back, the body can't come back into form. You'll never be able, you know, if you do come back, you know, you're not going to run as fast as you did because the female body can't handle childbirth as well and you're never the same. And so if I believe that hype, right, you know, mm -hmm. then I'd just be like, okay, yeah, you're right. I, I'll take a back seat. Uh, I can't do that because you told me that. And you ran your best race. And I ran yeah. my fastest, fastest ever. I got now. in the best shape that I ever did, <laughs> and I ran my best race and my fastest race ever. So um, I think, um, and this goes for all of us, right, men and women, yeah. don't believe the hype. So that hype being um, the, the untruths out there. You know, there are a lot of things, there are a lot of untruths out there and, um, and you see it smashed every time. You see the, the hype smashed every time when you watch the Olympics. And I think that's why we love the Olympic Games because you're like, wait, what? He was in a cast three months ago? Yeah. And yeah. what? He's and he's doing, but no, the, you know, you know, his doctors or, you know, people told him he can't do it. And she wasn't sure if she could come back after this injury or childbirth or family tragedy. Um, and yet, you know, you can do really what you set your mind to. You know, it may not be exactly mm -hmm. the, the, the goal, but if you just um, set those little goals, you'll find that, oh, wow, this world really isn't as bad as one might think. If you're watching the news a lot, you think, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so I would, yeah, I would want her to not believe the hype about, well, you know, if you're an athlete, then you can't be smart. If you're an athlete, then, you know, you really, you know, after your athletics, it's going to be a hard road and there isn't really much after that. Maybe you know, they're, 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 the world is your oyster. Yeah, sorry, yeah. It really is. And so that's what I would teach her. And that's what I, um, I also volunteer coach at Leaside High School. Go Leaside Lancers. Awesome. <laughs> I'm a track coach there. And, uh, oh, it's amazing. And you see... The kids come in in grade nine, and they're just like, and the girls are a little bit more like this than the guys. The guys are like, huh, I don't know what I'm doing, but girls are a little bit like this, a little bit timid. And then by the time they're ready to, you know, grade 10, 11, 12, you see them, they just, um, they really do blossom. And they, yeah, and, and not just the ones who are doing exceedingly well and going to OFSA, which is the Ontario yes. High School Championships for all the different sports, even the ones who just stick it out come to practice. Mm -hmm. That's all we ask too. We say, if you're going to come, if you're going to commit to this team, you have to come to practice. And if you can't make it, let us know why. And, uh, and then we want to see you compete. We don't care if you come in like last. It really isn't that. That's not it. It's your, that's where that whole participation thing comes in. Yes. And that's where I do want women, girls, mm -hmm. boys, no matter their level mm -hmm. to participate. I think people sometimes don't like, you know, I look back going to school and I, I did track and I did volleyball and I played volleyball in OAC year and I had wished when I got to York University that I had, you know, 
you just went to try out for the volleyball team. And uh, now, like, you know, you're yeah. in the working world, you're like, why didn't I go back and do right. that? But I think sometimes when you're younger, you don't understand how the training, how being on a team sport can impact your own success in the office. And, you know, they have all these reports in Forbes now with all these female CEOs who were on varsity teams and, and the skill sets they learned there, and now they're running their own company. So I think sometimes when you're younger, you don't always see in your mind mm -hmm. how useful being in sports could be. And, and you know, it's really good that you're, you're uh, coaching um, high school students because there's a lot of statistics coming out about young girls dropping out of sports, or just, I know there's a campaign about uh, girls breaking up with sports um, in high school and not, not looking back, just, I don't wanna do that anymore. Mm -hmm. But they don't always understand how useful um, some of the sports that you engage in and what you learn from, you know, working things out on your team help you in when you become an adult. I, yeah, I, I would um, advise all of you to just go online and look at uh, CAUSE, which is Canadian, uh, the Canadian Association acronym. for yes. the uh, Advancement of <coughs> Women in Sports, sports yeah. in Sports, and uh, they've really put in the work. Mm -hmm. And they, they've been out there, they've been that voice out there for women in sport, girls in sports. And they've been pushing for it for many, many years. And um, they've done the work, they've put in the, they, they've done a lot of research and it's true. Girls drop off with sport, they're like, oh, I'm done, I don't want to put on those shorts and go out there and go to gym. It's Early morning practices. Really, yeah, <laughs> in high school it's like almost done. And, um, and I think that even, you know, way past high school, way past college, and um, if there's an opportunity for any one of you to get into a sport, any sport, I'm talking everything, like tennis, curling, you know, um, softball team. It, cricket. It, it, cricket, there you go, there you go. <laughs> yeah, for all of us at any age, it's amazing. Uh, what team sports will do for you for that sporting environment even if you think I'm not particularly athletic there's so many people out there just like yourself who said yeah I could have should have yeah. and then I just kind of let it go and eh, it's getting kind of late but then they get they jump into mm -hmm. like a team sport and they're loving it they're relishing in that whole sporting environment and I think that it is yeah it's really important and you're right though the girls uh, a lot of times kind of fall off yeah. and I try my best to just Bring go, just back. come out, just come yeah. out, just have fun, okay, you know, <coughs> and, um, and, and enjoy just being in that environment. But I think um, that it's just, uh, it's just, uh, it's invaluable. And, and this is where I have to really emphasize girls. You know, I really think that, oh my gosh, because um, we don't sort of rough and tumble as girls normally when we're kids, you know, it's like, no, 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 stay over here. Yeah. And the guys get to rough and tumble and get to fall a little bit. They get the ball in their face and get the bloody nose. Yeah. And and maybe you don't have to resort to bloody noses, but, <laughs> but just being in that um, physicality and getting a little bit physical um, as younger and understanding, it, it helps you understand your body mm -hmm. as well. It gives you a little bit more awareness of your body. And, um, a little bit more grit. Yeah, Sometimes yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, falling a little bit and getting back up, I think it's just, it's so important, and especially for girls, because there's still, it's less and less now, thank goodness, Wonder Woman and Black Panther, you yes. see these women, and they're just like, uh, it's less and less now, but there still is that, you know, don't get your dress dirty, yeah. and, and be cute, and sit there, yeah. there's, there still is that ideal, but less and less now, like, I mean, come on, Wonder Woman, like, that was, a, that was amazing, those, those and Black Panther, yeah. the, the women yeah. warriors, yeah. I was like, oh my, oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah, and so. And it shows uh, women and girls that there's not one model for yeah, a yeah. woman. Like you can be yeah. many different things. You can yeah. like sports, you can get up and, and slam dunk on your friends and basketball right, practice, right. but still maybe yeah. go to the mall and look for your favorite lip gloss, you know? Like we are multifaceted. And I think sometimes girls at 14, it's kind of like they feel like they have to choose yeah. one or the other. Mm -hmm. So hopefully with, you know, more coaching and people, young people meeting someone like yourself mm -hmm. who's gone through it, you can kind of give them some, some good advice. Um, your other um, motto, I know when we were speaking on the phone, was stay in your lane. Yes, can yeah. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, <laughs> it's so appropriate, right, for a, a sprinter, yeah. right, to a hurdler, to say stay in your lane. Mm -hmm. And when I saw, you know, other people started using it, I was like, hey, that's our saying, that's just us <laughs> track athletes, we, you know, because... You know, when you're running and you're sprinting, right? So, uh, you know, anything, 100 to um, 400 meters and 400 meter hurdles, you got to stay in your lane. If you step out of your lane, you get disqualified. So that just means 
You don't worry about anybody else. Doesn't matter what lane you have. You stay in your lane. You mind your business and you run your race and you will win. Doesn't mean that you'll cross the line first. It just <laughs> means that you will win because you do what you need to do. You don't look back because then focused. if you do look back, you do look to your side. Then all the momentum shifts. From, instead of going forward, it goes sideways, and then you lose the race. So, um, yeah, we've been using the I sprinters, and, you know, we've been using that for decades, right? Stay in your lane, and now a lot of people are using Hashtag it. And I was like, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and um, so, it, you know, it's hard, right? With social media, you go online, you go to Instagram, you go to Twitter, and you're like, Facebook, oh, wow, they're so, she's so fit, and she's having so much fun in the Bahamas, and... It's minus 20 outside, and yeah, I'm just going life, to work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So then you kind of think, oh, you know, life is kind of passing you by, mm -hmm. and everybody else is living it a lot better and a lot more exciting than you. And no, no, you have to just set those little goals. You really do. And, and what, what, why are you here? Why are you here? And that's a hard question. Uh, I had a lot of people ask me that, like, what's, what do you want to do? What's your purpose? What's your purpose? Yeah. And I was like, yeah, yeah, no, yeah, I'm running, I'm on TV, and yeah, yeah, that's my purpose. And I was like, mm. no, 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 it has to be, it's, it's something deeper. It's not, um, it's not uh, something that's very obvious, yeah. each and every one of us. It's something that's just a little bit more complex, um, or I should say profound. It's not really complex. Yeah, sometimes you it's can't even profound. explain it. Like yeah. if someone asks yeah. you like an elevator pitch, like what's your purpose? Yeah. You're like, I'll get back to you. Exactly. You know, because you understand it in your yeah, own head. Yeah, sometimes it's hard to articulate. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, and so it's just, um, it's important that each and every one of us do that. And by staying in your lane, you are able to develop that and to, to really come to terms with who you are. But if you're looking, and I have to do this, I'm, I'm, I'm guilty. Like I go, okay. One more minute on Instagram, and I swear I'm turning this phone off. I'm not looking anymore. You know what? You know, because sometimes you can't help it. And so you, get drawn it, in, and you get drawn in. And, and hey, you an got work later, to do. you look up and you've got stuff to do. Right. So I try to uh, limit my time on, um, on social media because I got, you know, we have work to do. And you know what? Sometimes the work can just be, um, <clears throat> I'm going to clean up my house and call my mother. Yeah. That's on the to-do list. That's what I'm doing. Yeah. And that's an amazing accomplishment, mm -hmm. you know? So it's not as grand as we think. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Excuse me. It's, it's not as complicated as we think. I know it's hard when you see somebody like Beyonce, and it's like she's just taking over the world. She has twins in one hand and, and, uh, and a Grammy <laughs> and yeah. a clothing line, and it's like, well, geez, what am I just want to get through the day and be happy? That's not enough. Absolutely, but it is. You yeah. know what I mean? It is enough, right? If you can, you know, I don't know, be happy really within yourself and like be content within yourself and say thank you to the TTC bus driver and really mean it, that, that's an accomplishment, you know? We have to stop comparing ourselves with other people. Yeah, so that's what staying in, in your lane I like means to me. Yeah. And, um, you know, we talked about vo like having your voice and using your skills and having a passion and a purpose. Can you talk to us a little bit about how um, you transitioned from working as a journalist um, to now um, film directing? Right. Yeah, I can. Um, so get, being a journalist is just, it's absolutely perfect for me because I've always been so inquisitive, always asked a lot of questions, and that's what you do as a journalist. You try and get to the truth. You ask a lot of questions. You get different sides to, to the story. So I've been working as a journalist um, since uh, I was the lead anchor on the uh, Global News at noon, and then it was co-host on the morning show at Global since... Um, Whoa, can't even remember. Uh, 2012, for yeah, for a while, a little while. And uh, so I was working in that capacity up until 2016. And then I got a, a little like, I was like, what, 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 what? And they went, oh, sorry, we, Shaw bought, Shaw sold Global to Chorus. And so now we're doing this, streamlining. And thanks, but no thanks. I'll just be honest with you. They just laid me off, you know what I mean? They laid me off. They were like, thanks, but no thanks. I was like, ah, okay. Mm, okay, well, we, you know you know when your company gets bought, if you've ever done it, you kind of get the rumbling and you kind of go, ooh, Something's nobody's really on. safe here. Yeah. And I always kind of knew that. And I never, um, uh, I never for a second thought that I would just like live and die at Global and yeah. that would be all that I would do. I never mm. thought that. I always 
knew that it was something, it else. Was something else. Like, okay, run track. Mm -hmm. Okay, now um, journalist and mm -hmm. entertainment reporting, now news reporting. I always knew there'd be something else. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you, at first, I was like, felt bad, right? You know, you walk around, people, hey, I haven't seen you on the morning show anymore. And you're like, yeah, I know, I, I know, I know. What about and then, those raptors? No, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, and then you go, and then I would listen to myself, right? I would listen to how I would answer that question, like, what happened? I would listen, and sometimes I go, uh, couldn't even, like, hold myself up. And I go, no, nope. No more. You didn't do anything wrong. Why are you holding your head down? You worked, and you know what? You were with Global News for, t uh, sorry, uh, 10, 11 years? How is that a failure? Mm -hmm. How, tell me, tell me how that like is a failure. So I literally had to talk myself up just like I did when I'm at the track, yeah. on the line, like, you got this, you got this, you got this. Like, I literally would, did that mm -hmm. for like a, a couple of months, no lie. I was like, you got this, you got this, you know? And uh, so it's 2016. And, um, but I had this idea that I was working on from 2015, you know, this scene. And then when they laid me off and I got over the, oh, like that, the heartbreak, I went, there you go. Yeah. I went, okay, so it's now or never, because mm -hmm. either you just, you just find another job so that you can say you're on TV and nobody has to ask you again yeah. why you're not on TV anymore. So either you do something for someone else and you get out of your lane, or you stay in your lane and this, and, and you realize this dream that you had, and you make it happen. And I said, you got to do this. Mm -hmm. I said, yeah. I said, you know, okay, the worst thing that's going to happen is it's just not going to work out, but you're going to try. And I said, try and picture yourself. This is what I do. I go, try and picture yourself. You're 80, 95, right? And you're like, oh, yeah, I remember back in the day. And what would you think, right, if you had this moment where, you know, you got laid off and you had this fantastic idea to make this film about this brilliant Canadian jazz legend and he told you, yeah, go ahead, make the film, but you chickened out. Yeah. And you just went, no, I just want to get back on TV so that people can see me and recognize me. So is that where you found, like, confirmation for your purpose? That's where it was just, it was truth, you know? Yeah. And it was, and it took a while to, you know, continuously talking to myself, like, you know, like, what are you going to do now? Okay, you got laid off, but that's okay. There's, there's jobs. You can get back on TV, but why don't you do this right now? I have to keep telling myself that. You know, one day, it's like, yeah. Next day, it's like, oh, God. Whose idea was yeah. that? <laughs> <laughs> um, and then finally, you know what happens? Like, the, the, the negative just kind of is a little less and less because, like, the positive is really working, you know? Like, it's like, why not? Come on. Come on. And as I'm saying, why not? Come on. I'm doing a little bit of work, making it happen. I'm producing and, and I'm making it happen. And, and then when you don't have a job, hey, guess what? You have all this time to pursue, you know, the dream. So that's what I did. Um, but I just, I'm here to say, to be really honest, it wasn't like I got fired. I was like, eh, screw you guys, whatever. I got this film. It was like, it was a time of true like a, a human moment. reflection. Yeah. yeah, true reflection and true grit and... Um, and it was going on social media and actually looking for people and you know who would inspire me. I didn't look for the the perfect people on the perfect vacations. I actually would look up women entrepreneurs, you know, and then so you'd find these amazing people and you go, yeah, oh really? And then Ava DuVernay, like she oh she didn't go to film school. Um, she was a publicist and she worked. Uh, she represented films and, and sold films and worked with directors and she told she said I can do this mm -hmm. and she financed her first film um it's like fifty thousand dollars and she did it and look where she is now, and look where she is now. Mm -hmm. so I looked for people like that yeah. to inspire me and I went okay and it was it's very humble it's a humbling experience and it's not sexy, it's not, it's that work, it's that undercover work where you're just working and grinding it out and you still get people go, wow, what happened, what are you doing? And I go, oh, I'm working on, a, I'm directing my first film and you know, you don't tell, I don't, too I didn't much. give away yeah. too much, I just have to work on it. Mm -hmm. um, but I always call that, that's like the unsexy time. And it, you know, because you can't, you can't Facebook that, you can't Instagram yeah. that, and make yeah. that look like Throw a scarf sexy. On it. Yeah. You know, it's just like <laughs> you're in the library researching yeah. jazz, and 
and the history of the Montreal Jazz Festival, and you're trying to find footage of Oliver Jones at you know at the first jazz festival, and you're calling up people, and you're writing up contracts between yourself and Sony Music, and oh, yeah. yeah, and you're negotiating the price of the licensing, the song, yeah. and the publishing rights, and not sexy. But man, after a while, you start, you look up, you go, hey, wait. I'm doing something yeah, here, I did like this. you know, yeah. like you really feel like you're getting somewhere. And again, like I said, it's not something that you can really post and go, "Huh, look at me." But um, eventually, you you get to that point. Like I, um, I traveled around, not around the world, say, but I traveled yeah. quite a bit for this film. I, I was in Brazil, and uh, and then we ended up that we we finished up, we wrapped the film in Barbados. Oh. So, and then you know, so Vacation. you started to get some. Something back from yeah, it. <laughs> you start to get some love, and so I did post, um, a, you know, a really nice picture, and um, and I remember it's on Instagram, and I, again, I didn't really say what I was doing, but I said, I feel um, something beautiful is coming my way, you know, the sun's hitting me, and and I went, oh, so now I'm part of, you know, the um, the sexy club again, where yeah. I can post something <laughs> and go, see, look, um, but it took like, you know, I didn't post that picture till like. Uh, we went in January of 2017. So, you know, so I got laid off in July, June of 2016, right? So, you know, full six, seven months just grinding, you know, and then finally started to come out of that. You were talking about, you know, telling yourself, keep on going, you can do this. Yeah. But were there people in your village or around you? Yeah. You know, we all have our, or whether you want to call it your soul sisters or your circle. Um, who in your circle, you know, did you really depend on to mm -hmm. just kind of keep you focused and, and you know, that, that sense that, you know what, this is a transition for me, but I'm doing the right thing? Yes. Um, so there were a number of girlfriends, really, um, who, yep. It just there's no question. Like you didn't. I never hesitated to tell them about what you were going through. Uh, yeah, exactly, feeling, yeah. exactly. A number of girlfriends, I have to say, who just said, yeah, keep going, keep going. I know you got it, you got it. Uh, and Sometimes family, you need, to, you need to hear that. You know? Absolutely, no question about it. Absolutely. Um, just that after you hang up the phone, even though you had that great affirming talk <laughs> with a girlfriend, then it's like, ah. and then that's when I start talking to myself again. Mm -hmm. But absolutely, absolutely, mainly girlfriends and and family, mm -hmm. uh, and then and then um, and then I started to reach out once the 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 project was firmly entrenched and it was it was clear that it was. Uh, it was it was materializing. It was going to happen. Um, I started to reach out to people, past um, past acquaintances, past colleagues, and and um, and I think because of the six, seven, eight months of just you know really conditioning myself and mainly my mind mm -hmm. with the help of family and friends into knowing that I am I can do this. It, it gave me that fortification to um, call up, contact the. Um, like uh, CBC Sports and talk to them and mm -hmm. yeah well you know I was a guest commentator in 2008 so I've got this going on and and it was very and I really did feel it um, or like the National Film Board or your yeah other yeah that you can and sometimes it's okay if you don't feel it but you mm -hmm. still make that call you yeah. fake it till you make it absolutely <laughs> fake it till you make that's it true. that's really 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 true mm -hmm. so yeah so um, all that to say so the film. Uh, it, it, you know, May 2017 finished the film and then it, it premiered at the Montreal International Black Film Festival and then it, it, it uh, screened here in Toronto yes, as that. well. It was so amazing. And so the next step is to um, find a distributor, mm -hmm. which I'm working on. And then I'm working on another project, which I can't I know, I was right going to say, what's next? But I knew you were Yeah, the but to... it's, um, but you guys will love it. It's women <coughs> and sports. You know, See, yeah, you it really is, and it's gonna be it's gonna be phenomenal. And it was, you know, it was me walking into that space, the you know mainly male space, mm -hmm. and going, "Hey, I have an idea." And you know what I did? I read a book first about how to how to own the room. Oh, darn, I forgot the name. Anyway, it was really cool because it was like how to pitch something, how to own the room. Written. Yeah, by, I was gonna say, we'll we'll put it on social. Yeah, media. yeah, I'll yeah. find it. I'll yeah. find it. And, and then and then I was gonna read another one because I'm I love the library. I love I'm uh, I'm a nerd when it comes to reading and stuff like that. So I was in the library and I was like, okay, I need to read another book before I can go and pitch my idea, because it's you know they won't know they won't believe me and I, and I went nah. 
you know how to do this. You so, you know, this. I read one. I was like, you're good. Mm -hmm. And I thought maybe I'd make a bunch of notes. And I walked in there, you guys, and it's, un oh. And I just, I just started talking to him like this, like it was, yeah, yeah, like two human beings. Mm -hmm. And um, because I'd known him before, made, you know, made contact here and there. And, uh, and he loved the idea. Now we're just sussing it out. We're fixing it up. Mm -hmm. We're making it, you know, we're going to make it work. You guys will know when it comes out. But so you guys heard it you know, first. Yeah. Something's going yeah. on. It's yeah. women in sports. Women in Very sports. Very exciting. You guys, you and, know. you know, as soon as I hear, I'll make sure that you yes. guys know too. Yes, yes. And it's a little bit, it's a, it's, it's a little bit like uh, that I can't, you know, I can't reveal because then no. it could, yes. And also a little bit like, no, I gotta hold on to it. We do that it's... sometimes, like let's hold on to this thing. Yeah, and then yeah. When it's the right but, time to. Yeah, but I'll say this, release. that it just makes me so proud as, as a woman, mm -hmm. this project. Like I just, I see all of you guys and I go, oh my gosh, you guys love it. And then, and I know, like my brother will watch and go, what, this is cool. So I know the guys, you guys will love it too, and you'll see how, uh, you'll see, you know, if there was any doubt as to this sort of impetus and movement of women sort of earning, uh, owning their space, yep. you'll see, like, it's a perfect encapsulation of just that. Mm -hmm. Like, just to, the she's just owning of her that space. we're in right now, too. Yeah, right. she's just simply owning her space, and she's not pointing the finger and going, you did this to me, and you did this to me, and... It, because there is there is a place for that yeah. and there and there is a need for that yeah. when it when when uh, lines have been crossed mm -hmm. this is a, a celebration of the uh, the female form in all its glory and in whether it physical and, and spiritual too. It sounds so good I want to watch it now or whatever it is yeah. I'm like okay. get some popcorn and <laughs> you know right? yeah well yeah. thank you so much for um, you know sharing your journey uh, we talked earlier about you know, the life of a high performance athlete and, you know, going to three different Olympics to, you know, your your path as a journalist in North America and, you know, now a film director. And it just sounds like you have so many other things on the go that are coming up that, you know, we're all we'll all be celebrating and cheering you on, um, even if it's virtually uh, from the, the background. Um, but so excited for all the, the spaces that you're going to inhibit and happy that you were able to share your voice and story with Shoes for Sports. Well, I just want to thank each and every one of you for coming out. Toronto, it's a tough crowd, right? There's so tonight. many things to do and so many places to go. Mm -hmm. And you all came out here tonight. And this lady right here, <laughs> is, I know I've been, uh, me, 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 me. <laughs> but um, what you've done is kind of very similar in that, you know, you get kind of thrown something that you weren't expecting. Yep. And then that, plan you did <laughs> not plan, plan it. And then, for sports. Yeah. And then you take <laughs> it. it <found> me. <laughs> yeah, right. You take sort of a bad situation and turned it around and created this, which is absolutely phenomenal. I salute you. I thank support you. you. This is absolutely wonderful. It's so needed. And thank you to each and every one of you for coming out. I just, I want to, I want to know what each and every one of you guys are up to too. Yeah. And, and I just think that sport, no matter what form, whether we're talking high performance mm -hmm. or like the local softball yeah. is something that, um, it, you know, if you can get into it, 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 it it's so enriching. Yeah, it's people it's, putting it's, a yeah. team together at work. Yeah, exactly. Put a team together at work yeah. or just even encouraging your daughters, especially mm -hmm. to get involved in sport and you can kind of live vicariously through them. Man, sport is amazing. It really is a wonderful vehicle. And thank you guys so much for coming out. Thank you so much, Rosie. Um, you. Loved your story. You so Thanks much. for sharing. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you guys. Thanks for coming, everyone. Thank you.